Hello everyone, today we're looking at um, gynecology physical examinations. Physical examinations in gynecology. Right, so this is just a brief uh, summary of what um, a gynecological physical examinations include and this will actually apply to Mossless. It's a kind of examination where you have uh, seven minutes to take a history and about seven minutes to do a, a physical examination and then they're gonna ask you questions after that. Uh, it's a kind of examination. It's a way to assess medical students if you don't know what it means. Uh, so I'm explaining this uh, for the pur pur purpose of Mossless, right? So uh, in gynecological physical examination, uh, it includes a general examination and then examination from head to toe. So head, neck, heart and lungs, breast examination, abdominal examination, pelvic examination and calf tenderness. For, okay, let's start with general examination. General examination, you're going to first inspect from the end of the bed. You're going to look around the patient. What are the uh, equipments around the patients? Uh, is there oxygen? Is there uh, IV drip? Uh, what kind of IV drip? Is it just normal saline or is it some sort of uh, IV medication? Um, look at the patient. Is the pa does the patient look unwell? Does she look pale? Um, does she look cachexic, very very skinny? Um, does she uh, is she wearing a surgical gown? Uh, is there any signs nearby saying um, uh, fasting? Uh, so the, meaning that she is uh, being prepared to go into operating operation theater, or um, is does she have any? Um, IV cannulation in her hand yeah anything that you can see that might lead you to what condition uh, whatever that you can see around right um, next you're gonna go and start touching the patient so before you touch you have to inspect everything first and then when you start touching the patient you're gonna look for vital signs so this includes uh, so you're gonna touch the radial artery on the wrist and you're gonna feel for the pulse rate and pulse volume uh, and at the same time you can do a respiratory you can assess their respiratory rate by looking at their chest movement uh, and then um, capillary feel is for temperature you can feel but it's not very accurate so you should verbalize uh, blood pressure as well, you're not going to actually do it in that 7 minutes, so you're going to verbalize. Uh, I like to do a, I like to measure temperature and blood pressure as well. But you have to do your pulse, respiratory rate and capillary refill. So these are vitals. Because if you don't do your capillary refill, uh, she might be hemodynamically unstable. And you miss, if you miss that out, it will be the, uh, it will be really bad. Right. After your general examination, you move on to the examination of the head. So look at the eyes and mouth. For the eyes, uh, you're gonna pull down the uh, lower eyelids. So look for any signs of anemia. Does it look pale? Look for pallor. Does it look pale? That's an uh, indication of anemia or any yellowness. So join this. Next, you're gonna assess the neck. Don't forget the neck. Uh, so uh, this. This person has a head. Uh, many students forget the neck and they move on to body. Where's the neck? Have you forgotten the neck? Is she a ghost? No. So remember the neck. For neck, you're gonna I actually uh, at least verbalize it in your examination. So mention that you're gonna examine the neck, heart, and lungs. These three things you can verbalize, but depends on what the patient presents with. So let's say in you're going to do history taking before you do examination, right? So let's say your history taking, you find out that uh, in your differential diagnosis, you think that she might have some sort of cancer, right? So you're, you're going to need to um, feel, actually do the uh, feeling for the cervical lymph nodes uh, as this is really vital in uh, cancer cases. Uh, it's uh, spread to the lymph nodes so you're gonna check for cervical lymph nodes especially the one in the left uh, 
supraclavicular region, the troisius sign. You're gonna check for lymph nodes and thyroid, right? Lymph nodes, the other uh, important ones for cancer, and then for heart and lungs, you usually verbalize it also, but um, depends on the case as well. For heart and lungs, let's say your history taking and uh, um, you think the patient has preeclampsia, so you have to actually auscultate the lungs and the heart. This is because you might have positive findings there. So, um, right for preeclampsia lungs, uh, you have pulmonary edema, so you might have uh, crackles, and for heart. Uh, crackles, crepitations. For the heart, um, yeah, if you have hypertension, all of a sudden you might have murmurs in the heart or irregular heart sounds. Right, next, um, so head, neck, now to the chest, heart and lungs. Uh, what else is on the chest? The breast. So for breast examination, is if indicated. So if there's uh, cancer, again, it might spread to the breast, so you're going to do a breast examination. However, you usually don't have enough time to do it in 7 minutes. Uh, so you usually just verbalize the breast examination if indicated. Uh, indications include uh, cancer or uh, suspected cancer or, um, or any complaints in the breast. Let's say she had say complaints of breast tenderness then you do your breast examination. Um, next is uh, you move down to the abdomen. abdomen. So abdominal examination is the uh, main examination in gynecology uh, as a student, I would say. Uh, so uh, for abdominal examination, you're going to do the IPPA, so inspect, palpate, percuss, and auscultate. So inspect first any scars, any distension, any uh, swelling, any discharge, any um, stretch marks. Uh, how does the umbilicus look like? Uh, is it moving with respiration? Things like that. And um, after inspecting, you're gonna palpate, uh, palpate for tenderness, feel for the uterus, um, and yeah, for gynecological examination, right? You know, you have a measuring tape, don't ever take out the measuring tape. So, if you, for some, some lectures, uh, you, if you take out the measuring tape, you will feel straight away because uh, the way you want to uh, measure the size of the uterus is uh, by weeks, not by centimeters. So, by weeks, you're gonna palpate using your hand and then you're gonna estimate based on the level relative to the umbilicus. And you're going to estimate the size of the uterus by weeks. Don't measure by centimeters. Right. Uh, so where are we now? Inspection, palpation, percussion. Percussion, uh, percuss for the fluid level, free fluid in the abdomen. So you percuss from the umbilicus to the side and ask them to roll over and percuss again. Um, not going to explain too much on that. Uh, inspection, palpation, percussage, percussion, and then auscultation. Auscultate for bowel sounds. Next, uh, pelvic examination. So don't forget that the patient has a pelvis as well. However, uh, this is a bit controversial as uh, some examiners um, don't like you to mention pelvic examination as Pelvic examination is really uncomfortable for the patient, but some lectures emphasize that you need to mention the pelvic examination uh, because the, the pelvic examination is a very important examination in O and G, in obstetrics and gynecology. So it depends on the lecturer. So um, pelvic examinations include a bimanual palpation. Uh, where uh, or uh, or a speculum examination, it can be uh, using a 
Cusco's speculum or a Sims speculum or a and also a digital rectal examination these are your pelvic examinations right so uh, after that after pelvic examination you're gonna move on to calf tenderness so calf tenderness you're gonna squeeze the calves and look for any pain is there any pain in one of the calves uh, this um, indicates venous thromboembolism so because uh, gyne ONG patients they are usually either lying in bed for a long time or they might have cancer or they might be pregnant so uh, all these increases the chances of your blood clotting which increases the chance of venous thromboembolism which may cause pulmonary embolism so always check for calf tenderness right I think that's all I have for you. I'm just going to summarize again. General examination, then the head, neck, heart and lungs, breast examination, abdominal examination, pelvic examination, and then calf tenderness. Right, that's all I have for you. Thank you.